There's quite a demanding load case on this kind of aircraft because it's similar to a drone. Um, you've got potentially got the situation where you've got um, a maximum thrust on this rotor and maximum thrust on the diagonal opposite corner. And that puts a large uh, torsional moment into the fuselage. So the fuselage has um, frames that take this um, torsional load from the wing into the fuselage shell. And then the fuselage shell has a central spine or tunnel um, in it. And um, that acts as a large diameter tube which uh, is very good for resisting torsion. So that's the way the structure works to uh, keep it stiff. So a ballistic parachute system is intended to recover the entire airframe and pilots. Um, so the parachute will deploy from a hatch here, rocket will send it straight upwards and it will reach the full extent of its parachute bridle. Um, the motors will be cut off as part of the deployment sequence and the aircraft and passengers and everything will all come down under a parachute. Uh, one of the first things about a tricycle undercarriage is that the, the main wheels are behind the centre of gravity and if the nose wheel is allowed to caster, that means that the undercarriage is dynamically stable as it's traveling along a runway. It will tend to keep straight. That's as opposed to a tail dragger undercarriage, like on a Spitfire or something, which is unstable. So that's the first thing. Second thing is that we need this undercarriage to work both for conventional takeoff in this attitude and also um, when the aircraft is uh, taking off vertically, um, it tips up onto its tail um, and then rises vertically. So the tricycle undercarriage does a very good job of keeping it stable when it's moving forwards on the ground and having this tip up feature for vertical takeoff and landing. So the axe uh, has um, two battery compartments, one in the nose and one just behind the pilots. Um, they are uh, maximum size 24 kilowatt hours each. It's possible to substitute the rear battery packs with a hybrid uh, generator, which would be run by, by fuel uh, carried in a tank under the seats which is on the centre of gravity, so that doesn't change the balance of the aircraft. Uh, the axe is designed to be road transportable, and to that end, the wings are designed to remove uh, simply. Um, there are two spar pins, as I've previously explained, join the spar together. When those pins are removed, each wing can be uh, extracted from the fuselage. Well, the fuselage has got a lot of compound shaping in it, and that really lends itself to composite construction. And we need to, as I keep saying, drive the weight right down. So uh, these compound curves are quite good for stabilizing the structure against buckling. Um, but we will have um, sandwich panels where necessary in order to stabilize it. Um, we have made this bulkhead here, this frame, integral and also the one at the back. And this carries a compression load from the, um, these root pins on the, on the foreplane here. Um, fuselage will actually be um, laid up in two halves but will be joined together in the mould um, and cured all in one shot using the resin infusion technique. Resin infusion is good because it um, has no time constraint on putting the laminate together until 
you um, inject the resin under vacuum. And it produces uh, lightweight structures with very low void content. It also saves um, some cost compared with prepreg construction. And I have previous experience of using this kind of construction technique. Wing construction is by um, sandwich stabilized skins. You need a, a nice aerodynamic surface. So uh, the basic wing structure is um, a box type spar, which will have uh, unidirectional carbon top and bottom caps and a um, shear web of plus minus 45 degrees, to take the shear forces and that will be laid up into a top and bottom skin molding uh, which will be sandwich stabilized. Um, this is again very similar to um, composite glider practice. As far as impact protection goes, uh, this layout is good because the pilots are right in the middle of the structure there's plenty of energy absorbing uh, wings and undercarriage and everything around the pilots. So this creates some quite large crumple zones. Uh, we're using um, hybrid aramid and carbon in the cockpit construction, which is good for absorbing impact and also prevents the possibility of a lot of carbon shards coming into the cockpit area. Um, there are standard um, so-called emergency landing conditions that have to be fulfilled and one of them is a 9G forward impact case. The pilots have to be restrained inside the structure under a force of 9G forwards and any large item of mass which is behind the pilots such as these batteries and or hybrid generator that has to resist 15 G forwards. And that's to ensure, obviously, that these big masses don't come through into the um, cockpit area. So the canopy is a one-piece acrylic uh, molding. On this model, the canopy is just restrained by two pins here, but on the full-size aircraft, there are two flush panels which project from this edge here and finish up about here with a hinge at this position so that the canopy will be latched principally here and then the whole canopy will um, hinge upwards like this, um, enabling the pilots to get in and out. It's a large um, canopy giving a, a really panoramic uh, view. So the axe is equipped with four duplex motors. Uh, we're keeping to one rotor on each wingtip. They will be three-bladed to reduce vibration. And the duplex, meaning that there are two independent motors driving one shaft. Each of these independent motors is run by a separate speed controller and battery system. So they're all independent. However, if one should fail, then the flight control system would um, sense an excursion in roll and pitch, increase the power to the remaining good motor and reduce the power to the opposite diagonal in order to keep it under control. Each motor is uh, 50 kilowatts, uh, maximum continuous power. The aircraft will take about 110 to 120 kilowatts in order to hover. One of the interesting things about the axe design is the fixed 45 degree rotor angle and positioning the rotors at the wingtips. And what happens is that normally on a wing, you've got high pressure underneath, low pressure on the top, and there's leakage around the wingtip, and that generates a wingtip vortex and that consumes energy. But with this design, there's a component of the, of the rotor wash which is acting downwards. So whereas 
the airflow at the wingtip would curl round here. It can't because of the rotor downwash. And so what happens is that the um, airflow uh, is, or the, or the tip vortex is actually pushed out, out board. So having the rotor in this location increases the effective wingspan. Um, and so we get a wingspan which is more like from uh, rotor axis to rotor axis rather than just wingtip to wingtip. Order your own private axe eVTOL today at www.skyfly.aero. Less time, more joy, amazing views.